Welcome to Brew Planner. This is a general overview of some of the features and functionalities that you'll see on Brew Planner's dashboard. Here we have the dashboard. We see that it's split up into three different sections. On the left hand side, we have the brewing section with our four turns. So this is a column for each time that we have the cap capability of brewing on our brew house in one day. We also see the volume up above, so each of our brew house turns are 15 barrels. Here in the center section is the fermenting section. We see, uh, again, a variety of different volumes. We have 10 different fermenters. And then on the right-hand side, this is either the packaging section or the carbonation section. So this is where we represent our bright tanks, and we've also chosen to make a general column for packaging. The goal of Brew Planner is to have a visual representation of exactly what's happening in any given day. So for example, if we click on this day on the 26th, we see that we're doing four turns on the brew house. We're crashing both the fermenter number one and number two, and we are sending that beer into fermenter number eight. Uh, we see we don't have any activities in packaging that day and we can see exactly what is planned on any given day. We've had some users ask if there's the possibility of adding two icons in one day. Again, since the goal of Brew Planner is to simplify the visual representation, we encourage you to pick one icon that can represent multiple activities. For example, if you normally, every time you filter a tank, then you then CIP or clean the tank right afterwards, then this filtration icon can represent both of those tasks for your crew. You can also use extra labels, which are these little black rectangles that are shown next to the icons. These can hold from one to about six characters and give you the chance to add a little bit of extra information. So if we click on a certain brew order, for example, we click on this IPA, we can see that it's all three sections have become highlighted so we can see how they are linked together. This is helpful once your dashboard is filled with orders. We can right click on that order to see a little bit more information. So we see this is batch number 31 that will be in the fermenter for 14 days and it's the IPA. This is where we can make some edits to uh, specific icons or days in our brew. So for example, if we actually needed to crash this tank um, the day afterwards, we can move that late one day later and it will adjust accordingly. Some other places that you can add extra information, if we double click here or right click, then this pulls up this change brewing and fermenting window. So here we have each day that the beer is in the given section. So here we have the fermenting section highlighted and we can add, here's where we add those labels which are shown as the black rectangles on the dashboard. We can also add extra notes here on the side. Note that these, this information will only be seen once this, this little pop-up window is expanded. So we can see, for example, we're do, taking yeast out here, we're sending it to fermenter number five and it's the third generation of that yeast. You see here, so it's being sent into fermenter number five. In fermenter number five, we now have the yeast in icon, so that, that third generation yeast is being sent into fermenter number four. Some other pieces of information that can be represented on the dashboard are, for example, we have here this gray rectangle, so we've actually created a, uh, a beer style that's called Special Task, and we've, we've chosen the Repair icon. So if we expand this section here, this is where we can add general notes for the packaging section. Here it says we're Repair Stone in Bright Tank number two. So there's some extra places to add information. We can also click and drag this if we actually needed to move it the day before, or if it ends up taking longer than we expected, we can go ahead and click and drag that to accurately ref reflect how long that will be taking. Additionally, another use for that special task beer style here in the, the general packaging section, we've added another one of these rectangles with the, the box that says mix. So this is a day that we'll be preparing mix boxes um, in that packaging section. Uh, another use for these side notes can be time off requests. So if we see here that um, John is on vacation and maybe that isn't going to work to brew, 
to have um, four full brew house turns if he's on vacation, then we can go ahead and adjust accordingly. We can move those up, um, move the entire order, or we can also take the individual brew house turns and maybe we know we have um, more of our crew just in the middle of the day so we can adjust that accordingly. Sorry, not on the day before the fermenter, um, but we can adjust those down and pull it down to the, the day after, for example. So that's another use for those side columns. You can go ahead and close these general notes. Again, they can be expanded or hidden as needed. And just to show you how you're going to create a brew. So if we want to create a brew here for the for tomorrow, the, the red line here is always gonna be shown on the current date. So we can either right click to create the order or we can just double click. And you'll see that it assigns the order into the fermenting tank, the tank that we double clicked on. It also assigns the volume according to what we clicked on. By default, it will assign the brews into all three sections, the brewing, fermenting, and packaging sections. If you want to turn one of those off, we can do that. But for now, we're just gonna choose the IPA. And these dates populate based on the, the dates that you set to when you created this beer style. And if we click save, then we can see this order has been created. We see all of these, um, there are three brew house turns that were created because it's a 45 barrel batch. So we need three turns on our 15 barrel brew house to fill that. Again, we can move these brew house turns around accordingly to accurately represent exactly when we will be brewing those. All of these icons are icons that have been set by default from our beer styles menu. So if we go up to the menu, we can see where we're creating these beer styles. And you can see the brewing icons that were set for each day. So for example, for our IPA, it's by default going to be in the fermenter for 14 days and we can go in and set all of those fermenting icons for, okay, on day six, if we want something to happen, we can select that icon and so on. We'll go into more detail with that in later videos, but this is, again, just a general overview. Even though you have certain default icons set, you can always make changes to those. So again, we can right click and move those to the prior day. We can delete that. Um, delete that day. We can also double click inside the order to add different icons. So for example, this uh, at the top we have the yeast in from icon, but maybe this time we're actually doing a, a new pitch of yeast. So that's an example of somewhere that we can uh, make those changes with each individual batch. If we go um, again into each tab, Another place to add more information is with this little plus icon. So if we click on this, you see these tasks. And here is where we can add extra information for each brew house turn or each day that the beer is in each section. So for example, if your brewers started the mash at 7.05 and ended it at 7.55, 54, we can put that in there. It will calculate the total time for each of those processes or each of those tasks. And you have the option to add any notes here. So this is just another place where we can record all of that quality control and those tasks. And again, you, you can just put the starting time if you're measuring the gravity just at one time. Uh, we can just record that. These for fermenting, again, we have the plus next to each day. So if you're measuring the gravity, yeast count, pH, whatever it is that you want to have the opportunity to record each day, those can be added there. And those are again created from the menu called tasks. So we can add and edit right inside there. Brew Planner is designed to be very dynamic to adjust to the quickly changing needs in your brewery. So you can make changes by clicking and dragging if you need to move that a day later. If you need to extend the fermentation, you can extend them this way or shorten the fermentation. Um, all of these changes can be made right on the dashboard. One thing to be sure of is that once you have the schedule set and you're ready to make it live for your whole crew, be sure to click on this publish, this green cloud button. Um, so if right now we've been making changes and adding things to the schedule, but that 
all of those changes are not yet visible to our guest viewer. So once you're ready for that to be live so that everybody can see, make sure to click that. Now what you see here is shown to all the viewers. A few more scenarios that we can represent on the dashboard. Uh, for example, if we want to split a batch. So if we have beer that we're gonna that we're gonna brew here, we're gonna turn off the packaging section. So right now we're just representing in the brewing and fermenting section this 60 barrel batch of we'll say the, the Kolsch. Uh, we're gonna take note of the batch number. So we will save that and see that it's now um, represented in those two being filtered on the 23rd. Now what we can do is create two separate batches to represent the, the split. So we're gonna now just represent this in the packaging section, change the batch number so it matches the previous one. And here we have the 30 barrels of Kolsch. So there's one. Um, and then we can create the other one. Again, turning off the brewing and fermenting section assign that same batch number so they're linked together. We don't need 45 because we only had 30 barrels remaining after the split. Again, we'll assign the Kolsch if we need to make any changes. So by default, it has the can and keg icon, but if we want to change this into um, just kegs or whatever icon we need, we can make those changes right in there. So now we see we've, we've taken this one fermenter and split it into two bright tanks. And even though those were three separate Kind of orders that we created they're linked together so now that we when we move one it moves all of them this similar can happen if you need to split one batch into or um, excuse me put combine two fermenters into one bright tank if you're going to do a blend this is um, done in a similar way just by creating separate batches and linking them together with the batch numbers this is just a representation or an example of a few of the many scenarios that you can use um, or that can be represented on the Brew Planner dashboard. Please use your creativity, play around, and if at any time you need help representing a specific scenario, let us know at support at brewplanner.com. There are all of these uh, processes and the way to set everything up goes, we go into much more detail in later videos, so please check those out, especially if you're looking to see how to represent a pilot uh, brew house or if you need to, if you use uni tanks and don't use carbonation tanks, uh, we have videos representing how those scenarios can be represented. Thank you and happy planning.